Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Kiana Holloman and Emily Zarsk. How y'all doing? Good. Uh, how are you? I'm, uh, I'm doing wonderful. Uh, thank you for asking. And I'm, <laughs> I'm sure you're going to ask why I'm doing so wonderful. Why? Are you doing so wonderful? <laughs> well, of course, my, my Dallas Cowboys, uh, man. That was a good game yesterday, and they beat and they Tom Brady the, for the first time ever. Yeah, no, they we 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 clobbered we clobbered Tom Brady uh, yesterday. <laughs> so no, I'm, so I'm I'm riding this Dallas Cowboy high that most people in the world want to knock you off your perch. But um, uh, let me live for 24 hours. I tell people, let me live for 24 hours. Let me let me sit on this victory for a little bit before we uh, think about San Francisco. But uh, but I'm super excited about today's guest. And so let me stop blabbering about my Cowboys and let's get into today, today's guest. So Kiana, uh, if you don't mind. Today's guest has worked in Hollywood for more than 20 years. He's an Emmy and Golden Globe award winning writer and producer who has made his mark on TV as the co-creator of Homeland and the showrunner of 24. He's here today to give a military exclusive peek into his new series, Accused, which premieres on Sunday, January 22nd on Fox. Please give a warm cheap chat welcome to Howard Gordon. Hey. Hey, that was really nice, Kiana, except I hate to do a little fact check, but you said 20 years. I'm afraid it's closer to 38. Or oh, oh, my God. Years, That's 18. I know off. most people don't like to talk, but I'm just, uh, just setting the record straight. Oh, no, absolutely. Now, which, don't want to knock it down. Howard, we're trying to keep you young. We, we put more, more I know, than 20 I years. I appreciate <laughs> <laughs> Got to be, be honest here. No, awesome, awesome. No, that's 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 amazing, and uh, it's a pleasure to have you on the show with us today. And uh, can you let our viewers know where you're joining, where you're joining us from today? I'm in Los Angeles, California, and um, on a beautiful sunny day. We've had a, about a, two weeks of pure rain, so it's very nice to see uh, uh, the sun. And uh, congratulations, Chief, or I don't call you Chief or Sergeant, but uh, happy for you and Dax, Shepard, uh, Dax. Uh, and uh and this cowboys congratulations <laughs> absolutely and, and and chief is fine it, chief sounds a lot more distinguished he, anyway i don't know i don't know <laughs> yeah no just <laughs> no, <laughs> no it, it's a it's a pleasure to have you with us and uh matter of fact Dak is from uh grew up about 20 minutes from where i grew up in louisiana so i oh uh, no I, I love yeah. the cow cowboys but the fact that they got a louisiana boy at the at the helm it uh it makes it even you more. Know, he had a, he so had a great he had a great game. You just knew it. he had the fire in his eyes. He was going to win that one. Yeah, yeah. He came off a pretty rough one uh, last week <laughs> against the commander. So uh, we uh, we definitely were, were happy to see him bounce back. So Howard, you're one of America's favorite showrunners, bringing us hit shows like Twenty Four and Homeland. How did you get your break in Hollywood, and what was the moment in your career when you knew that success? was on the horizon for you? Well, that's a great question. Um, I got my first break, believe it or not, in on a show called Spencer for Hire. It was a private eye show and I was a, a teacher and my student was uh, the daughter of a producer who had a new show. It was a private investigator show. This is how old it, I go back, this is in 1984. And uh, she was very kind and offered me uh, to show her, She, I didn't, give my script to her. She knew I was trying an aspiring writer and I, um, she offered to uh, give my script to her father, who read it and invited me to pitch on this new show. And in terms of when I knew I was going to say, you said, when did I know I'd be, what was the expression you said when I knew I'd be, yes, I would say when I knew I wasn't a fraud or a failure, I would say, or <laughs> that I wasn't fooling everybody. It was more like, it took me about 20 years. I would say when I did 24, finally, something I, I felt like I was in the, I mean, to use the sports metaphor, I was in the zone there. I felt like I had learned a thing that by then it had been, you know, by Kiana's count, 20 years in the business. And I started um, <laughs> feeling some kind of, um, that I learned a thing or two. And, um, and uh, that's about when I sort of said, I think I know how to do this. 
but again, you're always learning and you're always making mistakes. And I, you know, I, just when I think I've, I figured out everything out, you know, something new presents itself. And that's the interesting part of being, that's part of the reason why I did this show in a way, because the world just changes faster than a lot of us can track it. And one of the great privileges of getting to be a storyteller is to try to work through, you know, some of the challenges that you, that, that are happening in the real world and you get to work it out in the imaginary world. Now, speaking of 24, fans are still reminiscing the glory days when Homeland and 24 were on air, but you have a new crime anthology series at Q, so it's giving everyone something to be excited about. So for those who haven't heard about the show or the news, what is Accused about? Well, it's a little, I, I sort of began to answer the, the question uh, prematurely, but it's, it's about, well, it's about the times we're living in. It, it, roughly speaking, there's a new a cast and a new story every single week, and there's a new defendant who is on the stand. And you don't know this person uh, or what happened to them, and you go back in time, and you find that moment where their lives changed forever. And it's really, but it, it, it's, ha but it, so it has a lot of the trappings of a courtroom drama, but the, some of the themes and some of the ideas, and I think the emotions underneath it are really what happens when ordinary people are caught up in an extraordinary situation. And I think it goes well beyond guilt or innocence or whether they, you know, or, or the, or the sentence they're given. It's really about, um, I think how complex it is to be alive today and all on all the shows sort of live they're very very human shows about people all of us would recognize um but uh, but it's also you know about race power truth itself um you know social media uh, a lot of the fault lines that our society is living on today absolutely and, and you also have a ton of heavy hitters uh actors and actresses including uh, Abigail Breslin, uh, Wendell Pierce, Rhea Perlman, Rachel Bilson, Malcolm Jamal Warner, and many more. So uh, with the rise of kind of anthology series, what is your thought process when creating these characters? Well, you know, every creative process begins with a question. I, I always just like something gets under my, you know, in my head and I can't get it out. And that's usually the beginning of every story, or every script I do. And, but the, 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 the wonderful part of this is that an anthology in this particular case, like Black Mirror, or like Twilight Zone, every episode is its own story. Every new cast is a whole new cast. Um, and I was just I was I'm really proud of these scripts and I'm really proud of what we put together. And I and my 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 premise when I wrote it was if I'm this interested in these stories, I sure hope a cast will be as interested. You know, these and, and I promised Fox I'd deliver some heavy hitters without knowing I could deliver on that promise. But fortunately, the actors uh, came to play and they were as intrigued by these stories as I was and in front of the camera, behind the camera, we got some really, really uh, top shelf talent. And you also wrote um, for the first four seasons of the X-Files. What are some of the differences between writing for short term characters and writing for characters who viewers will follow on TV for several seasons it's really you know it sounded i would i should say it sounded like a really good idea at the time it was kind of a pandemic um project for me and uh the challenge is that i'm writing a movie every single week uh, the, the the advantage of writing long-term characters is that you've established them the audience falls in love with them and you really kind of put them through the story that you've established the foundation of this time i had to really it was really challenging and far more challenging than i thought it would be to to do a, a deep and steep dive and, and and fast dive into like grabbing an audience getting them to understand this character their situation and make them lean in past that first commercial break so behind the scenes really, you also worked with i'm really a i'm really proud of it i'm sorry go ahead ken Oh, no, I didn't want to cut you off. I just saw my big head on the screen. So <laughs> I, <thought it> was <laughs> no, I was done talking and then I thought I'd add something, but I really didn't have anything to add. It's OK. OK. Um, so, yeah, behind the scenes, you worked with some really amazing, impressive directors. So we had Julie Porter, Marley Matlin and Tasma Chavez. So what was it like working with such a creatively diverse cast and also crew for season one? Well, look, I'm a 
I'll tell you, in the times we're living in, look, one, one of the, you know, I, one of the things that got me wanting to write the show is recognizing that we're living in very, you know, as the old Chinese curse goes, may you live in interesting times. And we all know we're living in interesting times. And so one of the things about the show was trying to sort of uh, uh, have the opportunity to allow voices from a whole bunch of different communities that I would otherwise never have had the opportunity. Billy Porter, um, um, you know, in, in, in the drag community, I've Marley Matlin, I'm just looking at, at, the, at the slides, you know, there's a, a show about a deaf surrogate. Um, there's a Native American uh, indigenous Taz B. Chavez, um, amazing director, uh, upcoming, used to be a slam poet and has now become a superstar, you know, writer and director. And it takes place entirely on um, Native lands and, um, uh, and it's with a, a mostly Navajo cast in front of the camera. And so that, for me, it was a privilege and an opportunity to sit back and shut up and listen to other people's stories and help them craft those stories. And so that was the great opportunity of this um to do a lot more a lot less talking and a lot more listening so uh, can you kind of give us a a, a kind of comparison on kind of when you started in the business kind of compared to now to have access to folks with that much diversity or that much different uh kind of talents uh because it seems like now it's we're so we got so much access to information and people because of social media and different forms but uh kind of back back when you first started this, you know, 38 some odd years ago, I, I'm sure it was a drastic change from, from then to now. It is unrecognizable. What was interesting about that um, is, is uh, I mean, it, the world was so different. It's almost, as like, it's almost like comparing what it must've been like with a horse and buggy and the car. And I'm not, I don't think I'm overstating the comparison. Uh, when I entered the business, it was at the tail end of what had been probably a 50 year business model that was very recognizable and slowly like for instance with 24 that opened the doors to continuous storytelling like um uh if you were if you remember that show and i don't know if you do you might have been too young for it but it was a, it was about a, uh it was an ongoing story that lasted over the course of 24 hours every hour was connected to the uh the hour before and the hour and then the hour afterwards so it was kind of the first binge storytelling before that everything had been uh you know, single episode, standalone episodes. So um, that was really about technology, about DVDs, about um, the idea of what's now streaming is um, has changed and upended the entire business model, how people watch shows, um, how they pay for them. Um, the t tech companies, I mean, think about it, Netflix, Amazon, Apple, these, these um, uh, giants moved into Hollywood and kind of changed the way we do business, and I think in some ways to the to the good, and uh, in some ways to me problematically. I would say that what I miss about the old days more than anything is that there was like a Thursday night or a Saturday night or let's on twenty four. You knew that Monday night at nine o'clock was was um, you know twenty four would come, and then when it ended, you were waiting for the next one to come, and you could get to you know it's like I hate the word binging. I mean, who wants to binge? Like, think about it. you people use the word binging. I think it's a disgusting word. I want to eat my meal. Yeah. I want to be hungry for my next one. I want to order on the menu and I want to be and I want to look forward to where I'm going, not eat breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then tomorrow's breakfast, lunch and dinner and be red eyed and stomach. And and so I miss those days. And I'm glad that in a way, I think a cues might have been my antidote to that as well, because these are pretty hard hitting shows. I didn't I got to say I, I was given the, you know, the mandate and the and the, and the freedom to tell some pretty hard hitting stories. And I think you're gonna to want to take a breath at the end of each of these. And uh, I always, I told the, when I pitched the show to the, to the network, I said, you know, I want people to, when they finish watching these episodes to just not be able to talk for about 30 seconds and then look to someone, whoever they're with and say, and talk about it. And I hope that the week between, and that's, what the, that's why I'm happy it's on a regular network so that I get to deliver the shows um, in that manner, in a curated weekly manner. Yeah. And I, and I appreciate the compliment of, of, of my, um, I guess me being youthful potentially, uh, but definitely not. <laughs> I definitely was around for 24. Jack Bauer was one of the, those characters that you just can't forget, uh, 
Keith Sullivan, he killed he killed it in that role. Uh, but well, I really appreciate. By yeah. the way, the the, the the armed services could not have been more. You, you were um, uh, first of all, my, my my my. I wanted to lead with my gratitude to everyone and anyone watching because I'm very very grateful for for your service. I can't tell you how much it means to to to, to me and to my family and to all of us. Um, and in that particular case, you were of you know uh, we had a great relationship with some some of the folks here. Absolutely. And and one thing about military folks is we're, when we're watching shows or series that uh, have anything to do or are bringing the military, we're always looking for uh, that, you know, with, how authentic uh, that that experience is on on screen. And, and I know some of it has to be sensationalized because that's just part of, uh, of storytelling. But and we do a lot of dramatization too when we're telling stories in the military. So you know we'll be deploying and we'll we'll talk about some uh, things that it probably didn't go exactly like that, but it was it was somewhat close or whatever. Probably, the case yeah, yeah, yeah. But we appreciate you for uh, for for having that 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 tight relationship with the military community on that one. But you're also known to to have characters in uh, sticky situations on either side of the law, uh, and that's kind of been your forte for a while. So. Uh, and beyond TV, you wrote two thrillers on government, global conspiracy, and international terrorism, which is, are pretty big topics, uh, especially probably within the last probably eight to ten years. Anyway, uh, so what what inspired you to expand your writing repertoire to novel writing? Well, you know, it was um, uh, well, there was a writers' guild strike, and so I had uh, I had the opportunity. I had a bit of, a bit of a hole in my schedule. Uh, and that was it was pretty it was as simple as that aside from the fact that as a writer you're always you know wondering about the freedom to not have to negotiate with actors and and uh, and 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 networks who are telling you it's too expensive so i just had me in the page in my imagination and so it was really just the idea of just not having to answer anybody really uh that was about as simple as that <laughs> but you know but but on the subject of of, of you know look once again, the the thing about being a writer is that you get to, you really do. Obviously, after nine eleven, it changed everybody's world. I mean, not just my fictional characters, but 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 all of ours. And so, again, you get to work through some things um, as best you can and try to figure it out. So, not that it's meant to be my therapy or anything like that, but it is. It is meant to help people think a little differently about. Um, and also to entertain. I mean, that's the first thing. That's like, you know, I don't want to, I'm making it sound like I'm writing, like a, it's medicine for people or, or a textbook, but it's not that you get to do it. You know, you try to entertain people. That's kind of your first job. And then once you've jumped that one, you hope that there's something else that they come out of it. So you're not just uh, distracting them, but making them think a little differently about being alive in the world today. Yeah. And, and it looks like life is giving you giving you know creative minds a lot of a lot of material to work with. So with uh, all this, yeah, unfortunately that that's the case. <laughs> unfortunately that's the case. Unfortunately that's the case. And, but I'm um, a big. I, 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 I was going to say one thing. I was just going. I'm sorry. No, I keep on. It's not. No, it's no, not no, the no, lag. Please. It's my slow brain. It's working like a, you know, an old radio. <laughs> but the uh, it's taking a while for the tubes to warm up. But the but. But I, I want to say, because it's apropos uh, military community, is that America as a place, um, as a country, as a set of ideas, has always been something that I, I'm, you know, intensely grateful for. But it's also been an evolving process. And I think asking those questions is kind of, again, every citizen has to do that. I think every soldier, I'm sure, has to do that. And I think every uh, every writer who writes about the, you know about the world is is working through this crazy experiment called America that um, may you know is imperfect but you you know name a better place or a better um, and that's kind of my you know and, and that that doesn't mean looking past the, the you know the sins of our past the mistakes the continuing ones but I think that we are still you know this beacon and can be that for the rest of the world and i think that's what i was working through as a writer and all those things and look my characters no the heroes it's not about like you, you said it before about you know there's not a right choice and a wrong choice there's often the least bad choice and that is really the the real gold when you're mining for a story yeah and, and we also talked about before we got on the show is um 
you, you mentioned that you went to uh, Alabama and uh, Tennessee and were able to see some things that you hadn't seen, you know, in, in, in your lifetime and not really realizing what's what's going on. So uh, just that exposure to the to the world or to the country, to different parts of the country uh, is, is super important as well, because we kind of grow up in these silos uh, uh, of life. And, uh, you know, being in the military, I'm fortunate I get a chance to get uprooted and planted in a different part of the, the country or the world uh, every two to three years uh, for, for most military members. Uh, but but, you know, a lot of my folks that I, that I grew up with, they haven't left the, the, the state of Louisiana uh, that often in life. And so right. just getting out of experience in the world can give you a lot of, a lot of you know, subject matter, especially for, for creative minds. Yes. Yeah, no, I think, that, I, think that's, I think that too is like, when you mentioned, it does connect a little bit to the earlier question about why this show particularly, I was able to, I would say, shine a light on these communities and on these places inside this, you know, inside our, our, our uh, on, the, you know, this big, big country of ours. Um, and I, I think in a way it's a travel log, this show, because one episode takes place again on Native American lands in Arizona and the next one takes place in Boston. The next one takes place, you know, in, uh, in, in Brooklyn. So a lot of different stories, a lot of different people. And, um, that's this is a window for people who can't get out of their house they may not be able to see those have those experiences on their own i hope we've done that i hope hope we've done it as authentically you know factually emotionally and you know as possible and so howard um you did touch on this earlier and thank you so much for your kind words um but we do have service members in america's armed forces and their families are watching us live would you like to say anything else to them today well, I, I think I've said it as best I can, except that I think that in a time, I, I, I have to say the people who I have met, and I've been very fortunate to have met a number of military, I have some, some, um, some family who were no longer uh, um, um, retired, but I've, I had some military people in my family, but not, I never did serve. Um, which felt like a whole a bit in my life. And I, I, I wish in many ways that I had. But in this very fractured world, it feels to me like the military is one of those institutions that um, is an opportunity, like, like Chief said, for people from all over the country to get to, you know, cross paths. And it kind of is um, uh, an institution that I have just the utmost respect for and all the families who participate and serve, I'm really grateful for. We want to turn to our comments and questions for you now. Um, Julie says, I used to stay up late to watch Spencer for hire. A few Cowboys fans in the comments as well saying <laughs> Um Chris says, 24 is one of my favorite shows of all time. Thank goodness streaming wasn't an option back then or I would have binged watched every season in no time every single episode left you hanging it's a great compliment eddie says i'm getting my seat ready for the new show can't wait got my dvr set and let's see tremaine says <laughs> um i have been through 24 several times lol i'm on season four again <laughs> <laughs> i love it <laughs> i i love it um I, I got i will tell i will tell that to bob cochran who's the co-creator of the show his son um was is a ranger um and uh, and uh, and just just retired i'm gonna i will i will tell him sean oh, yeah. cochran nice. well, so uh, so you also kind of had your hand in writing and producing um and, and so what what is your favorite medium for writing and it, it's a two-part question. So what is your favorite medium for writing? And if you could start your career over again, what would you do differently? You know, hindsight is twenty twenty. You know, um, I, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy to say I would do nothing differently, um, which is to say that I learned from all the mistakes I made, and I made plenty of them. Um, um, what was the first question? Jeez. So, so uh, it was, it was a, uh, what's your favorite medium for writing? Cause you, you, you oh, my favorite novel. medium. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, uh, I, 
I'm afraid to say that I, people don't read like they used to. And I, that worries me too. I don't read, and I, that includes me. I'm not throwing any stones. I think um, we're becoming a culture that is very screen centric. And so the point of writing, and I'm gonna not even put a value judgment on that. I'll just say that if that's how you reach people and how you communicate, then you better write, you, know, you better go there. And, I, and I'll tell you the one thing I am very happy about TV, there used to be a bit of a, you know, TV used to be like the wicked step or the stepchild to movies. Movies were the thing that people wanted to, you know, Bob wanted to do movies. And I was like, I always wanted to do TV because I grew up on TV. I grew up, on, I, I, you know, it was on, it was on a little bit too much, I'm sure in my house, but I love the idea that you're with these characters in your house, uh, you know, day after day, week after week, you know, year after year, hopefully on a successful show. And that creates a relationship that goes really deep in people's, you know, minds. I was, you know, I, I, I was close to Captain Kirk. I mean, I, I grew I, I did, again, I came of age when we had all the family roots, Star Trek. I mean, I got my phaser right here. I mean, that's like, <laughs> like, that's like that's good. That's old school oh, yeah. phaser. So oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, you know, that it, it shows you how, and that's how, how deep television as a medium got to me. Of course, television has changed. Now people are watching their, you know, their, their things on, on the phone. So, um, so I would have to say TV, television, such as it is, is still my favorite medium. Yeah, and uh, you bring that point up, and I just think back, uh, like my kids right now, they don't even want a TV in their room. They want a gaming monitor, uh, pretty much, and they can do everything through their game or through their phone. Uh, and I remember, yeah. for me, we, we didn't have, you know, my, my mom, we didn't, we couldn't afford really TVs in all the rooms, so we had, we had the 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 living room with the TV in there and everybody kind of come around for, uh, you know, the different shows that we watched and uh, it came on the Jeffersons and, and, and all the different things that we, we used to watch growing up. And, and that was our thing. And then to go to the movie was a special occasion. Like I was, uh, uh, so I, I was really kind of married to TV uh, coming up, but now my kids don't even care to have a TV in their room. And I, I find that, I, and that, to me, that's a little problematic because I have to say, when I watched all those shows that I mentioned to you, if you, you know, uh, and you too, you said like everyone gathered and they were, so it was a communal or family experience. I think that's lost. And I don't, I think that that is part of um, a bigger problem in our society that we're all watching our own, in our own little silos, in our own little screens. And I sure wish that people made more of, uh, you know, on the, like 24, I, I, I'm hearing you know, the your, your wonderful comments from some of the listeners out there, watchers. Um, and it was great because there were 24 parties, like there were 30 people watching 24 together at a time. And it was fantastic to hear from them. And I think that was part of the experience. So I wish there was a way to, to do that again. But, you know, sometimes you can't put the genie back in the bottle. And so you're already starting off on a good note with TV fans, um, giving us a decently long season of Accused. The first season includes 15 episodes. Without giving away too much, or a lot, whichever, but without giving away too much, which episode are you most excited for viewers to watch? Oh, man, I wish you hadn't asked me that question. I can tell you every one of you. No, it's like, look, I, I, you know, I, I know, I know Chief has got children, I do too, and you know, I, I, there, I love them all. I just love them differently. <laughs> and sometimes I love one more than the other on a Tuesday. And I love, you know, I love the other on a Wednesday. Uh, but I'll, let me just say, I'll just say the ones that are in the order. I like them all. I love them all. In fact, I got it. I, what I'm proud of is that none of them, uh, th th there's not a stinker in the bunch. They're all pretty good. They're all, they're all good. They're all differently good. Uh, but I, I'm very proud of the first one because it was the first one that I shot and the, uh, the one that's premiering after the football game this Sunday. Um, I like them all, but I'll start with that one. And it's about a father and his I have two adult children. And it's about the challenges of being a, a parent of adult children. And that's uh, but that's the very just the tip of the iceberg. No, that's exciting. So after we watch the 49ers beat the Cowboys, we have to tune in. Uh -huh. <laughs> really? Really, Kiana? Really? My goodness. You shouldn't go. You can't go there. You got some. You might have some San Francisco watchers here. 
Yeah. Your, your evaluation will reflect, Kiana. Your your evaluation <laughs> will reflect. Just remember that. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. <laughs> but as a reminder for our viewers, Accused premieres at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central on January 22nd on Fox. And you can also stream the premiere on Hulu the next day. We're so excited to tune in, as I've already said. Howard, what other projects are on the horizon for you? Uh, well, I have another um, series with my sometime writing partner, uh, Alex Gonza, who I uh, co-created Homeland with. Uh, based on the series uh, Gattaca, uh, the, the movie Gattaca about 20 years ago with Uma Thurman and Ethan Hawke, uh, which is a kind of a reimagining of that, just um, of that world. Um, and a couple other things in the hopper, but this one has been pretty much, you know, everything for the last couple of years. So I'm really e eager for the audience to, to view it. And before we say goodbye, where can viewers go to follow you and keep up with all things Howard Gordon? Well, I <laughs> think I'm still on, I think I'm still on Twitter, but I don't really post too terribly much. I may have to, I think I, they're probably going to make me get back on, reactivate my social media. So I, I, I can't, uh, I think I'm on Facebook. I think, I think I'm still out there somewhere, but I've, I've, uh, that's good. <laughs> Call my agent. So, <laughs> gotcha. so, so if, if somebody's sending Howard Gordon messages on Twitter right now, or I'm going to try, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to tweet. I'm going to tweet myself right now, see if it's still working. Hold on a second. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had another guest that, that, that said that he hadn't been on social media in, in so many years, but he's getting messages that uh, somebody's created a page on his behalf and is, is answering mail and doing all kind of weird stuff. And so, uh, hopefully, you don't have you don't have a a, a a fake page out there somewhere in the world. Uh, you know, acting yeah, on your behalf. I know. I think I'm still here. Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, you're still, still active. You're I have, just... have eighty. I have eighty six hundred followers. Wow. Man. No, I'm I'm on. I'm on. <laughs> so awesome. Yes. So, yes. So make sure y'all follow Howard Gordon on on Twitter. He may not answer, or he may he may not use it that often. But uh, make sure you're following him. No, I'll be on this <laughs> this week. I'll be on. How's that? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And for our chief chat viewers, uh, you can find this episode mm -hmm. on YouTube. Uh, you can rewatch with your friends or catch up with past episodes. Also, should be sure to join us back here at 11 a.m. Central on Tuesday, February 21st, when we welcome author. Read Mittenbuehler to the chat. So Howard, it's been a, a blast talking to you today. Uh, we, we, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to to catching this accused after my Cowboys beat the 49ers. Thank you very much, Keon. <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely tuning in uh, on Sunday to watch the show. Uh, I, I didn't know before we we booked you that you were associated with so many awesome shows uh, that I've I've watched growing up, and so. Just thank you for sharing your art form with the world and and kind of being that storyteller that you were and you know to, to you know to think that you know you started off being a a, a teacher and and your, your student kind of you know hooked you up with their dad to kind of get you started that's that's an amazing uh amazing story so uh, that that gives hope for you know all, all the folks that are doing whatever it, they, they they feel like they need to do right now to kind of pay the bills or whatever the case may be but uh, they can also follow their passion along the way. Thank you very much, Chief, for having me on. And uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, I hope you enjoy the show. Absolutely. And so if you don't mind hanging on to after the live, uh, we'll we'll kind of say our formal goodbyes at that point. But uh, we're, we're going to go ahead and, and close out the show. And again, thank you uh, for what you do. Um, you, you give us a, 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 a escape from the craziness of the world uh, by, you know, having these awesome stories on, on TV for us to watch. So uh, thank you so much. And with that being said, Chief Chat out.